Guide to Eating Street Food Tips from an Experienced Backpacker Admit it, tucking into street food is kind of cool and yummy when traveling, right? It's cheap, convenient, and conducive to learning more about the local culture, but you gotta be careful. While a plate of delicious samosas for a few bucks or even cents might seem like a real bargain, the potential for severe food poisoning or a dodgy belly, if you're lucky, is a much higher price to pay. Not saying here that street food must be off the menu, but you must be cautious. Watch this video to learn our tips so you can navigate street food while keeping your wallet and your belly happy. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing marvelous. I'm doing fantastic. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. Today, I'm particularly happy because we're talking about food and I love food. And um, I want to talk to you about street food. And now I'm giving you a guide from an experienced backpacker. How to find safe street food vendors. So if you're wondering how to tell if street food is fresh, first thing, look for busy places. They are usually your best indicator that a place is popular and that happy customers keep coming back for more. If there are locals, queuing up even better. In fact, some travel experts suggest it's best to read up on a country's meal times and adapt your itinerary to uncover the places where locals eat. What's even more, high footfall means that the vendor will constantly be turning over new dishes to keep up with demand, eliminating your risk of buying food that's been left out for hours. That's the first thing. The second thing is look at how the dish itself has been prepared. Ideally. It should be cooked from scratch in an open kitchen rather than being served up from a pot. This means that the food hasn't been hanging around too long, which can cause bacteria to fester. It also gives you a chance to take a look at the ingredients and the vendor's hygiene practices while they rustle it up. Otherwise, you really have no idea what went into a dish or how long ago it was cooked. If you can, you want to take a peek at the workstation. Be very thorough here. Are ingredients stored individually? Because, for, for example, raw meats should always be kept in separate containers to other ingredients. Is it free of insects and bugs? Are the vendors following basic hygiene practices like wiping tools and surfaces down? Do they use gloves to handle ingredients and change them when handling money? These are all factors worth considering. If in doubt, steer, steer clear. You can believe me on that because it's just not worth it. Finally, it's not just cooking tools you need to keep your eye on. Be aware of the tools provided to eat your meals too. To be on the safe side, bring your own or wipe down ones provided before using them if they're not the single-use kind. Right? I'm talking about forks and, sp and spoons here. How to safely buy meat from street food vendors. Dishes containing meat may be riskier to purchase and in some countries, many travelers stick to vegetarian street food dishes only. Not only is undercooked meat dangerous, but if left out for long periods, bugs such as E. coli and salmonella can quickly grow and cause serious bouts of food poisoning. There are a few things you can do to minimize your risk. Number one, order dishes with smaller cuts of meats. Smaller cuts since they are more likely to be cooked through properly. You want to opt for a dish that is cooked in front of you so you can be sure that the meat is fresh and not merely reheated. Make sure also that your dish is piping hot and cooked all the way through before you dig in. You may want to cut chicken through the middle to ensure it's not pink or bloody, right? This is kind of, this is very important. If the meat tastes lukewarm or cold, Either return it to the vendor and ask for it to be cooked thoroughly or just chuck it away. Now, what I'm just telling you so far, it sort of it relates to eating poultry and red meat. But many countries pride themselves on their more exotic street food offerings. So novelty stands on the tourist trail might offer the chance to try insects, frogs, scorpions and bugs. And while this might rightfully seem like a great selfie opportunity, <laughs> the above hygiene recommendations still apply. So it's all about 
what really works for you. It doesn't work for me, but what works for you. But always think about hygiene. Always focus on the popularity of the stain. Think about the the um, the, the dish being cooked in front of you. All right. So I just explained to you how to find number one, how to find safe street food vendors. And number two, how to safely buy meat from street food vendors. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We're all having a conversation today around food, street food, and I'm giving you a guide to eating street food. And those that guide is coming from 20 years, 10 years, from an experienced backpacker. Let's talk about how to safely buy fruits from street food vendors. You think that fruit will be safe, will be a safe street food bet, right? But there's always some things to consider when it comes to safety. When in doubt, peelable fruit is always the best option. Although the fruits will likely be fresher than what we used to in the United States, it could well have been washed in unsafe water that your tummy does not agree with. With this in mind, you cannot go wrong with fruit that can be peeled, like bananas, oranges, mangoes, and papayas. If stocking up on bag fruits to take uh, on a trip, make sure it's chopped and peeled in front of you so you can see it's fresh and that the knife is cleaned. And consider giving it an extra rinse in bottled water to be on the safe side. How to safely buy cold food from street food vendors. Cold foods to look out for include prepared fruits, smoothies, and salads. In many Southeast Asian countries, for example, cheap fruit smoothies from street vendors are a popular way to start the day. Assume always be on the safe side. You would assume this will be healthy, but you want to tread carefully. You may notice that vendors might add in syrups and sweeteners to disguise the taste of gone off fruits, perishable or perished fruit. Avoid this where possible. Always make sure the blending equipment itself is up to scratch. Is it being cleaned thoroughly between each serving? Does it look modern or on the edge of breaking down? Another issue is that ice is often added. Sometimes safe bagged ice from filtered water will be used, but skip it unless you can be sure it's from a proper source. Also take care when ordering dairy products in some countries. They might be unpasteurized, uh, unpasteurized which dramatically increases your chances of foodborne illnesses and exposes you to all sorts of nasty, nasty, nasty bacteria. So depending on where you are, it could be preferable for you to order coffee or tea and black tea or carry, or carry around your own mini pots of long life milk. What about water? This is one thing we have uh, thought about while preparing this show. What about water? You can't live without water. You have to drink at least two or three um, liters of uh, water a day. When in doubt, filtered water is always best. Luckily, in backpacking hotspots such as uh, Latin America, Southeast Asia, bottled water is incredibly affordable. But to save both your pennies and reduce waste, it's highly recommended to invest in a travel water filter. It's easy to slip up and forget to be cautious of ice and foods washed in water, like salad and fruits. Be sure to ask for drinks without added ice. This is critical. When it comes to things like salad, eating cooked vegetables is a safer bet. What about allergies and intolerances? Having allergies or intolerances can be tricky when done in, in, in other countries, but believe me, it's still possible to enjoy street food. What you want to do is to research, you want to research popular local dishes beforehand. For example, if you are a gluten-free, mango sticky rice is a great diet street food option, right? So nuts and other severe allergies are trickier and will require more in-depth research when planning your trip, including speak with your, speaking with your doctor and seeking advice from fellow travelers. The thing here is that you have to just plan the trip beforehand you have to go on the internet, go on YouTube, and read more about the uh, read more about the dietary customs in the country where you are about to visit, the country or countries you're about to visit, and pay attention to three things. Like I said, pay attention to to meat, to water, and to the hygiene. So meat, water, and hygiene. When it comes to fruits, always 
prioritize the peelable ones. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous. I'm still here having a conversation with you, giving you some tips on how to eat street food properly. If you love this kind of content and love the clarity and quality of the content, please consider subscribing to our channel and turn on the notification bell so you are informed in real time whenever we drop a new show. And we drop this kind of shows every single day, rain or shine. What to avoid when eating street food? I want you to clearly keep these tips close to hand to avoid any misguided street food hiccups. I recommend that you always swerve the following. Dishes that appear to have been left out rather than freshly cooked, avoid them. Fruit that isn't peeled or bagged fruit that isn't chopped in front of you. Ice in drinks or fruit smoothies. Milk, yogurt, and soft cheeses. Salads. Vendors that don't use gloves or follow proper hygiene practice, those are big no-nos. Tap water, big no-no. So what is really safe? Dishes that are cooked from scratch with ingredients that are clearly stored separately. Cooked vegetables. Bottled water. Fruit that you can easily peel such as banana, papaya, mango, and orange. Busy vendors who are clearly popular with locals. You want to always follow the cues. Vendors who follow hygiene practices such as changing their gloves and wiping down surfaces. Meat that's piping hot and cooked in small pieces. Ice made from filtered water. Bring in your own cutlery. Bring in your own allergen translation cards. This is it folks. This is the recap. This is the end of today's conversation. I hope that this kind of gave you gave you an idea of what the things you need to do, things you need to stay away from as you travel and you can enjoy your travel and not bring food poisoning back to your home state. Here's a recap. I was talking to you today around how to find safe street food vendors, how to safely buy meat from street food vendors, how to safely buy fruit from the vendors, how to safely buy cold food from those vendors. What about water? What about allergies and intolerances? What to avoid when eating street food? And finally, tell you what is really safe. I will see you next time. And if you have to travel, have a safe trip and stay marvelous.